fire truck and put chips on it, so they had tar and chips around. <laughs> but about that much. <laughs> But to start with, the township over there, a lot of these township roadways started out with another creek gravel. That's right. The well, guys used to go to the creek, shovel it on their wagon, take it up the roadway and dump it off. That's how a lot of guys paid their taxes, working on the road. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 747, I guess, was gravel at one time, wasn't it? Oh, so it was at one time, yeah. I don't remember being gravel. No. Nope. Now, but, I was told that you two guys were just really wild. Well, we wasn't wild. We was reckless. Okay. Wasn't wild. The only thing I can say was you wanted to get home. You wanted to be the first one in because you were the second one in. You had to unwire the gate. That's right. <laughs> we wired up gates and done everything. Oh, so oh. that way we knew when when I was home or when Pete was home, if you had to get out and unwire the gate to get in, you know Pete was home. <laughs> That's right. Well, we've been known to stay a little late. <laughs> oh, what do you think we was doing? 18, 19 years old and some country girls around? We wasn't playing hopscotch, was we, Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> was there a favorite spot to take the girls back then? Other than yeah, the barn, then, barnyards. Barnyards, that's where you went. Well, sure, didn't we, Johnny? Yeah. What was your favorite barn? Up on the hill. <laughs> up on the hill. Mm -hmm. Where? Up where I live now. Oh, okay. In that barn? No, not in the barn, just sit in the yeah. barnyard. There was no lights or nothing. The barnyard, not the barn. <laughs> I tell you what, we had some reckless times, didn't we, Johnny? Yeah, I used to pick Pete up. We roll right over the hill up here and pick her up. Oh no, I had to pick up my date first. Go up there, and my date would have to get to her his date because she wouldn't let Pete in the house. <laughs> That's the way it goes. You never know. <laughs> no. Well, let's talk about farm life. Thrashing, film silo. Well, I don't know. I've farmed on every, I've, I've worked on every farm almost from here to Ruff Foster's. Somewhere along the line. And what was it like to work on a farm? Just plain hard work, wasn't it, Johnny? Set up fodder. Yeah, and but we never, never seemed to bother you. No, it, we it was used to it. it was a, what killed me today? They come every year, it was a yearly occasion, come around. Hey, you didn't have one job and say, hey, I'm going to thrash today, I'm going to thrash tomorrow, I'm going to thrash next week and keep on going for a full year. You had your seasons in there. Right? Mm. Well, I can't get across a lot of these guys. They they can't stay up here all year. they got to go to Florida. That's right. Well, you know, we used to think it was great. Well, we all had snow a... come down. We could take our sleds out and well, sled I... down around the hill. And... I'd go over to Johnny's on the night and go sled riding over there, and then Mom Keener would always have a bowl of popcorn or something when we'd come in, didn't she? Yeah. And, uh, but we filled silo and thrashed. You just traded help. You didn't trade money. You traded help. Go to our place today, and the next guy is tomorrow right down the line. And you never traded money. You just trade help, didn't we? You know, if you traded money, I got my dad's farm account book over there yet, from where he was farming in Westchester. He made five dollars one year. Hmm. Going to be almost that bad this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did fun. make a little. I mean. It, I mean, yeah, but. It's Where different. Where did you sled? We, uh, Hutzman boys over. Yeah, pretty good hill here, so. Hutzman boys over. We used to come over here, Eileen's, and go down to Swings down here, the next farm from us. And they had a big, big uh, uh, bobsled. Bob We'd tear it up. We'd be about six or eight kids on that thing, and go down the hill and hit something, tear it up. And next morning they'd fix it all up and start over. Mm -hmm. And we'd over to Keener's. We just all had little sleds, didn't we, Johnny? Or we take a scoop show or something, didn't we? Scoop show, sit on a scoop show. Anything to get down the hill. Where was your farm? Where Lee is. South. Where, where, yeah, where Lee lives now. Where south Lee of the park. Lives. Oh, south of Keener Park. Where, where Keener Lee, park you know where Lee Keener lives. Yeah. That's okay. their, that was their home farm. Okay. And mine was right. My farm was right across the road. And my parents died in 1970. We sold it, and that started building. When did you move over here? I was got married in '46. Moved over here. Kids today growing up in, in Westchester, I mean, there are so many houses, or, you know, you can't go anywhere unless you get in a car. It's hard for them to imagine. Well, we'd walk or ride bicycles or ride a mule or anything, just as long as we got there. Gosh, going to school, I used to ride my bicycle the biggest part of the time well, in school. Well, old Dutch Skinner, when he was driving the school bus, he'd be there anywhere from 7 to 9 o'clock, and Johnny and Bob and Katie and us guys, we'd walk to school quicker than we could yeah. ride the bus. 
From what school did you go to? Yeah, Westchester. Union. Yeah. It would be Union. Yeah, Oak. yeah. Yeah, but when we had to get on the bus and go, go to to know. Go up to Peggy, oh, go down. There wasn't that there. many kids. Go to the Runyon School at, down to 75 mm -hmm. and take us down to uh, Cincinnati Dayton Road 25. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Come back up through Gano. Come back up and around Gano and all of it, then come back up to 25 over there. Hey, we was on this thing for an hour, hour and a quarter every Miss day. Not that many roads to choose from, really. No, oh. there wasn't that many kids. Oh. There's only 400 kids in the whole school. First grade, the seniors, when we grad, when we went to school. Miss Tarvin ran up the road up here. He was driving, had a wooden school bus. You never rode that, did you? No. Katie did. No. His sister. And over there between Stanley Hunter Laws and the railroad bridge, that road was like this, a washboard, old gravel road. She'd just sit there and shake, and that old bus would just rattle. Only held about 20 kids. Yes, sir. Wooden, wooden body on it. Wooden body. Had an old Instead Chevrolet chassis metal, with a rubber wooden. tires and all this. Uh -uh. And that that road was just washboard. And she'd just sit there and she was just, she wasn't as big as you. She just shake like that. But it was just every, just like that. Just My like husband one. lived right over here. He's dead now. But he used to drive a school bus when they had horses on it. Yeah. Wow. See, he my was last driver before they put gasoline motors on. My mother-in-law went to the school over where, where uh, uh, Kramer's is, you know where Kramer's, you know the old school, old school house on uh, on uh, Station, Station Road? Road? Yes. That's that's the original schoolhouse. My okay. mother, and right up here one morning, the, I think the horse ran away or something, but anyhow up on this hill, up here Tarvin's Hill, she told about the horses running away or something. and. Uh, but they rode a horse and wagon from here over there. Mm -hmm. Your mother went to school. My mother-in-law. Your mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Station Road Schoolhouse there. And then I think she finished up over in 1918. I think she finished up over in Westchester, the new school, when they built it. Well, I went to Pisgah Special School, the first eight grades. And then they didn't have any more than that. We just had eight grades over there. And then you had your four over here at Union School. Finish yourself out. Well, Port Union was down here too. Port Union School was down here. Well, as young boys, you probably, I mean, you could run and ride your bike forever through well, Westchester yeah. without encountering any Well, you could, you could, you could walk from here over there. You. you could walk from here over there, from over there. Never, a car never passed you. you never yeah. see one. You never seen one. I used to watch, walk, walk, watch cows on Westchester Road when I was about. Uh, six, eight years old, we'd go from Keener's Lane to the railroad, go down there and watch cows. And only three guys, two two milkmen and a mail mac, only go from eight about eight till twelve. That's the only guys, only people went by. Drive a herd of cattle down there and watch them along the road, eat the road. Casper Casper Beadack was the, the mail, mail carrier. And you could set your time right on there, and he'd be there every day at that same time. And the milkman the same way. <laughs> was he the original mail carrier? No. Oh, no. No. Old Joe Lambert. They Lamber. used to carry him by horse through there before he oh, started. When they used to have the post office over West, just a little old post office, Mary, Mrs. Kramer run it. And Joe Bramber had a little white horse and a little red wagon down there in the back, back street in Westchester. And he used to be a racehorse. And us kids was just little kids. We'd run up alongside him, and he'd he'd run, keep out ahead of us. Remember that, Johnny? You, you, might, no, you went to busy school. With CS, I, I don't, don't remember Western. all that stuff. <laughs> but, uh, and we'd slide down the hill in back of Ely's store. That way we didn't have to walk around the road and slide down the hill on a rope. And and, and then old Joe Bambert would go up there and take the mail from Westchester over to to the uh, they had a, a depot over on a railroad on on uh, Station Road. And they'd pick up the mail and go over there and come back. Where was the Ely store? Where? <laughs> Ely store. Right across from Hall's grocery. Hall's uh, gas station. Carry out. Carry out. Right across the street. Okay. What do you think of all this? Um, all these houses. By God, it's wonderful. Some people don't like it. I want. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't make no money farming. <laughs> Did you Maybe. ever think you were going to see that? I never dreamed. Five years ago, I never dreamed we'd be doing what we're it's doing. It's amazing next to your house, isn't it? Are you kidding? Yeah. I was over there this morning where more hammers being pounded and drills are running and you can shake a stick at it. I never dreamed that, that I'd, I'd be doing that up here. 
Well, my wife was little, you know, she'd Pete, shoot me too. Pete stayed with the farming end of it mostly. I connected in with farming and next grading together. So he picked up a lot of this stuff on the farming end of it. And I'm a little like he was told me a while ago, new people from here to there. Well, Southern Butler County, there were very few farms or even this side of East of Hamlet, I should say. That you never worked I wasn't on it, either hauling livestock. Or lime. Lime, fertilized, hay, gravel corn, or something. Gravel, some of the other, but I was on, it, on them properties. That's what me, I worked on them, filling the silo and stuff. Then I clerked, I used to clerk a lot of public auctions. From 1950 to 1990, I clerked public auctions. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Did you used to call? No, I, I, I was took in the money. He was, a, he was a clerk on the end, to keep things straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wrote everything down and settled it out and all that. All over Southern Ohio. If you were to, um, if you were to tell kids in Westchester what it was like to live here 50 years ago, what would you tell them? Wonderful. Why? It's free. You didn't have all this monkey business. We didn't have dope. We, if you got, if you need your ass spanked, you got your ass spanked. That's it. And when you got home, you got the second one. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean that's, that's pretty plain for this, but that's the truth. What would you tell them? Just about that. On videotape. <laughs> I'd tell them to get an education, get off these daggone drugs, and get an education. Well, what was it like out here, to live out here? Yeah, we, Great. wonderful. Why? It was just home for everybody. You could, I could go in any house and get a meal when I was 16 years old. And, and no uh, telephones. No, we didn't, we had, we had a telephone. No, like, we didn't have electric until 1946. Everything you did was by hand. I mean, Planted corn with a two-row planter and a team of mules. I, we went to the prom, our prom. The next morning I got up, went up to Ronner's after we had a we had the prom over at Westchester School, and we decorated the school. The next went up to Ronner's and Hamlin, got an ice cream cone, come back home, kissed the girl goodnight, went home. Next morning got up and planted corn all day with team mules. Today they got to run all over the day gone world. Yeah, I'm glad you put that all over the world. <laughs> That's the truth. We didn't spend all this monkey business money. I think it cost me a quarter of 30 cents to go to my prom. What's that? And you didn't have the quarter of 30 cents. You had to wait to find it someplace. No, I, brought, I borrowed my brother's coat, so I had a coat on that night at the prom. Yeah. I just try to picture, and I have two boys, and I try to picture what it would have been like to, to be able to send them out. And, and not worry. And you'd have, like, we, like you lived in Keener Park, you know, yeah. and you could trust them to just go play in the woods and have a great time. We, we, you know what? We never locked the door. Me, my dad, when we go to church on Sunday morning, had an old high back, about like that chair over there. He'd lean the door and stick it underneath the doorknob. That was our lock. We never locked the door. But I envisioned that for you. Was that what, what it was like? I mean, you guys. You, you kept never locked the door. Other than your farm work, never had a key for him. Never <laughs> had a key. We never had a key till about 1950. <laughs> But as young boys, gone from morning till night out playing in horse We wasn't woods playing. And we started time. thrashing. By God, he didn't play when I started thrashing. Johnny did. Johnny and I set up a lot of corn when was 15, 14, 15 years old. Yeah. Then we filled silo and worked. Mm -hmm. They didn't put you on a mantle. Yeah, you were talking about going to Port Union here. Yeah. I used to cut corn at night for the neighbors. Yeah, come down and help me set up corn. 11 or 11 or 30, and then go down and pick them up from down there. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean... Well, I started thrashing. Nicholas Shock. Mm -hmm. yes. Of course, you never shock corn. You don't know how long it takes uh, to make a shock. It takes 12, 12 rows this way and 12 rows that way, and then you got a shock. Yeah, well, they don't check corn anymore, so they can't go by the head on. But what I'm saying is about different. 12, at least 12 steps each way, about that. So if you didn't have electric... Lanterns, buddy, and coal oil lights. I, I got coal oil lights up ever. If somebody ever lights that damn thing, I'm going to throw it out the window. Stink. You can't see nothing? Well, I got you out here and you damn don't destroy mine. <laughs> I, I don't, I'll, I'll get a flashlight or something, but I don't want no coal oil lights and lanterns. So you didn't like the lanterns. You didn't have electric. You worked constantly. What is it that you liked about it? It was fun. We enjoyed our work. You know, I'll tell you, if we didn't work, we didn't live. And back then, if you, you had to work. They didn't have all this giveaway crap. Right, John. The only thing they had was giveaways on WPA come in. That's right. Everybody was out of work, and they but, said the WPA works uh, deal, and 
picks and shovels over there on Westchester Road. I can remember that. There used to yeah. be a red barn set over there, yes. and they had their box sitting alongside the road with all their picks and shovels in and everything. <laughs> Come nighttime, everybody threw their shovels in the box, and they shut the lid down, and that was it. Next morning, they had a... The next they, morning, everything, everything was, right was Everything box. was hand labor. You didn't take a backhoe and, and all this monkey business. You did it with a team of horses and, and a shovel, didn't you, Johnny? So if you were to tell somebody 50 years from now what was so special about farm life in Westchester, why that was so wonderful, what would you tell we them? We didn't know any different. There's your secret. If you don't know any different, you're lucky. Isn't that right, Johnny? We didn't know any different. All we knew was work. We had love. We ne I never went to bed at night. I didn't have a clean bed. I never got up in the morning. I didn't have a clean bed of overalls to put on. Never went. Never got up in the morning. I didn't have a load of manure to hold someplace in my life until the last couple of years. And it was all by hand until Johnny Keener got a Ford loader. <laughs> and then it was different. That's, ain't that right, Johnny? Yeah, yeah. How about family life? How was that different? It was great. How was it different? Well, you, <laughs> you didn't hear, you didn't have yeah, no horses. comparison. Yeah. No well, comparison. We had love. We didn't have that that thing. We there's, made our own fun. We played checkers and we, there, and we played the cards. Point right and, there, we had love. I don't care whether you was at my house or I was at your house. Hey, you respected that house the same as your own. That's right. And more. And if you got into trouble, you got your little butt spanked. No matter how that thing got around so quick and got back home before you did. It's no, been a no. miracle. But no telephones, but hey, you might as well confess up to it when you come home that you did something wrong, got your ass whipped. You might as well tell it now and take your second one. <laughs> we had love. Well, and every farm had a farm gate between them. Every farm had a farm fence line of it. Everybody knew where their fence line was, even the dogs. We could almost go from Mason to Gano just through one of those farms, couldn't we, Johnny? And we could drive past. And always watch your neighbor's door, uh, uh, doors, see whether it's open or shut or something different in the barnyard. If there was, hey, you drove in and took care of them. Well, you could have them help you a little bit or something. That's there. right. There's plenty of help. So, Miss, do you know Hugh Walker? I've met him. He know. was with my mother the night I was born. She gave him my first bath. Uh, his grandmother was, Miss Grandma Walker. Mm -hmm. I was born right over Westchester. I guess you were born at home too, wasn't you? Well, well I expect you? I was, because Claire Sullivan spanked my ass the first thing. That's right. Started the breathing. <laughs> That's right. See, we we had love. Did you get that? Sure, you did. Get it straight, buddy. <laughs> but so what did I, you believe in? What? What did you believe in? God. Good Lord above. You you said your prayers. And something was going on now. Me and Pete all the way through life. You had something going on at his church. We went to his church. They had something in my church, we went to my church. If you was finished with church, then if you had some hours left and you could run around yet that night, that was up to More you. More power to you. My dad but told you me. You went to that church first. That's right. My dad told me. He was he, Catholic and I was Lutheran. So there's two of them, hey, you couldn't get any closer. Uh, We've been like combatants. brothers. Combatants, uh, a war starting or anything. We've been like brothers yeah. all of our life. Have we? Yep, but we always got along good and got along good with the families. Pete had a telephone down there when I started in business. Even put the telephone number on the door of my truck, and I've laughed at that ever since. My mother, my him and Johnny and I got to watch my time. Johnny and and my dad, jo Johnny and my dad was was good buddies too, and they come over to Carl Niederman's sale. Johnny bought a truck over there and bought some other stuff. My dad bought some stuff and come home. He said to Johnny, said to my mother, he bought this little, couldn't, right after the war, you couldn't buy nothing, could you, Johnny? Couldn't nope. buy a truck or nothing. Anyhow, come home and Johnny said, I don't know how I'm going to get in business to my mom. I said, I haven't got any telephone. Mom says, well, all you got to do is put your number, our, our number on 524. <laughs> That's what it was, put the number on your uh, door. I'll take your calls and you stop in every night and I'll tell you what to do. She did that to you for quite a while till, you better till you got married, wasn't Not it? Not only at night, if a call come in the middle of the day, she'd, she'd run get him in down. that little Ford coupe and down she'd come. And she'd run him down. <laughs> See, we, we That's how everybody held together. That's right. You didn't you didn't fuss you with You didn't me. ask the person just like that, hey, how much I owe you for this call or hey, because you run down here, how much do you get? And no, we always got together and had a big uh, 
chin dig or whatever you want to say. If everybody brought something, we had a hell of a good done. That's right. You didn't trade. You didn't trade dollars. You trade friendship. That's what friendship and grub. That's right. Food. See, that's what did this. I, I weighed 125 pounds. Got married. Any old hog gained two pound a day, but it took me 50 years to gain 100 pounds. <laughs> You dug on a guy, guy family, don't want to work. Family's the biggest thing right there in the, in the belief in God. That's right, and hard work. If you don't want to work, you ain't worth living. And don't go just to Sunday, Sunday to church and sit up in the front with your head above everybody else and say, hey, I'm in church today. And the hell with you morning you go out and cut the guy's throat. That's right. And our, I tell you what, our hands... We went through one of them deals just about like that, and I can't remember what year, but... Hey, everybody was out for that almighty dollar, and they would cut you no matter what. Cut your throat. What went on? And your handshake was your, you didn't have to put it on writing, just shake the man's hand. That's all you needed. If, 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 he, if he wasn't any better than his handshake, he wasn't worth anything anyhow. That's the reason I think the Amish get along so good today. You better not go to an Amish and buy something or tell him something, hey, I'll buy this for a certain price, and then try to weasel yourself out of it. It won't work. They're, like Pete said, they don't write nothing down, but your word is good. If you say that, you better back it up. That's right. Well, that's the way it used to be here. It's, it's a lot that way yet, but you got to watch who you're doing with. Is that right, Johnny? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, there's too many guys wanting to be the top lawyer anymore. No, there's too many chiefs not love Indians. That's the trouble. Have you um, been to Keener Park much? Do you go down that way? Oh, I was just over there the other night for scout meeting. Oh, were you? Yeah, I see them plaques up there on the wall. Johnny Keener has been a scout that, ever since I knew him. That's just some of them from uh, Cub Scouts and from uh, baseball. I'm heavily involved in Cub Scouts, but is it, um, it must be a real tribute to you and your family that so many people still use that park and that it has your name on it. So well, yeah, but I mean, I'll tell you what. You, we had to watch pretty darn close when he was first putting that in there. Because they didn't want to tear that all up. And I said, no. I said, you read your contract with OKI. It says things will stay as they are. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful place. It's a nice place. See, we was, my brother-in-law, Walter Coles, Don's dad, and I was marshals in that parade. Right. Mm -hmm. how, how was that? Wonderful. Good. I enjoyed it. Good. I enjoyed it. It's nice. Well, I don't know. Sure. I, After I, all this time, might as well. I've been around here long. I never lived out of Union Township in my life. Well, was, right I was Grand Marshal five years ago. Uh, something like that, yeah. I think at some time in your life you ought to be Grand Marshal. <laughs> 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 hey, you know what? i got to shove off. If it's, how's your time? Right. No, I mean, you need, I any, we have what we wanted, you need so. more? Not for the moment. <laughs> well, you can talk to Johnny if you don't mind. I'll excuse myself and be gone because okay. a lot of this bull you just can't get on tape, see, because it won't stick. <laughs> like a vampire looking in a mirror. What? Like a vampire looking in a mirror, yeah. Yep, you never know. But uh, old Johnny and I have been buddies all our life. We're going to stay that way. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, but you can see who did all the worrying. He's got gray hair, but I got I ain't got too much yet. Well, <laughs> see, you never know. I didn't worry too much. What will happen will happen. What don't happen won't happen. Tomorrow comes. Yesterday's history, tomorrow's mystery. Enjoy today. Let her go. I like that. That's true. So November 11th? That's when the armistice is signed. That's when the new war is going to break out, too. <laughs> Don't put that on tape. <laughs> Scratch that. Scratch that one a little bit. <laughs> they better for a little while. No, I hope everything works. Never know. Well, I guess I'm 